Hi, in this video we're going on a tour of the periodic table. Uh, let's start with the guy who uh, is credited with really developing what today's periodic table looks like, and his name is Dmitry Mendeleev. Uh, now, Mendeleev was not the only person who put together a table of the elements, um, but he was one of the only people who predicted spots within the periodic table that represented elements that had not yet been discovered. Um, and so this was something that was unique to Mendeleev, and that's why Mendeleev is typically credited uh, as the father of the periodic table. So here's how the periodic table is laid out. There's 118 total elements, and they're all numbered, and they're numbered by their atomic number, which is the number of protons. Um, this piece down here, students ask about this quite a bit. Uh, the shape of the table, let's just talk about the, the shape of the table overall is kind of strange. But there's always part of a table that's like separated and put below the table. And why? <laughs> well, the truth is that piece fits in right here. But you might see an issue with this. Each box has become very small because the table itself has become very large. Uh, and so it's much easier for us to, to put this on posters if we can keep it to a manageable size like this. That's it. There's really no other... Uh, scandal involved. It's not like they're the rejected elements. They're just elements that uh, are left to the bottom so that the table can fit on a poster a little bit easier. Um, so element symbols or element boxes on a periodic table, depending on the table you're looking at, can be formatted pretty differently. But no matter what table you're looking at, there's three or four pieces of information that should be on every table. One is the atomic number of each element. That's always a whole number and it's just counting up how many protons are in the atom of that element. Another thing that'll be on the periodic table is what we call the element symbol, which is just the one, two, or three letter uh, abbreviation of the element. Uh, one major thing to note here is that uh, the first letter of every element symbol is capitalized. It's gotta be capitalized. Any remaining letters, if there's more than one letter, will be lowercase. The third piece of information that's on every uh, periodic table in every box is the atomic mass. Now this is the average atomic mass of all of the isotopes of that particular element found on Earth. And so uh, we actually just covered a video on calculating atomic mass, so you can check that out if you need a refresher or haven't seen it yet. And then if you're lucky on a periodic table, they'll give you the element name. But that's not always included. It is on ours in our class. Um, but going forward, that's kind of a, a little bit of a luxury, to be honest. Uh, so it's good to know the name and the symbol uh, because they are somewhat interchangeable. In the periodic table, we call rows periods. And there are seven periods in the periodic table to actually match the seven electron shells that can surround an atom. Uh, columns in a periodic table are called groups, and there are 18 groups. Um, elements within a group are very similar. Sometimes groups are called families. Here's an overview of the periodic table. Most of the table is made up of elements which we classify as metals. And in our very next video, we're actually gonna talk about what makes an element a metal uh, and what makes it not a metal. If it's not a metal, it's typically called a non-metal. And notice that uh, the top left element there is a non-metal, even though it's in amongst all the metals. Um, a lot of the periodic table is what we call non-metals. And then some of these elements between here are what we call metalloids or semi-metals. Um, and they can exhibit characteristics of a metal or a non-metal depending on the circumstance. So they're kind of strange. Uh, the ones in the bottom right corner here, we actually don't know enough about to be able to classify them as one of the types of elements. Um, we've made them synthetically in a lab. Uh, that means we just haven't found them naturally on Earth or in the universe anywhere. And they're so unstable that they break down like immediately. So there's not enough time for us to collect information about these elements uh, to be able to classify them as a metal a metalloid or a non-metal. So it's possible that within our lifetimes we'll have the technology to be able to do that, but right now we just don't know a lot about them. Now there are some regions of the periodic table that are so common in everyday items and certainly useful in chemistry to know. These have names to them. 
uh, with the exception of hydrogen, that very top element there, all of the group one elements are what we call alkali metals. All of the group two elements, every single one of them, is called an alkaline earth metal. In this uh, middle section here, we've got transition metals, which do some funky things. Um, this section we talked about just on the last slide there are metalloids. Sometimes they exhibit properties of a metal. Sometimes they're more like a non-metal. So it really depends on the uh, circumstances of temperature and pressure. Uh, group 17, uh, all of those elements are called halogens. And then group 18, all of those elements are called noble gases. Um, in this little section here, these, what is that, six elements there, those are all non-metals as well. Um, they, each of these groups have, technically have a name, but they're just not as, as commonly grouped together. Um, and so these are non-metals. But this bottom piece here, this is called the lanthanide series and the actinide series. And they're named after the elements that lead them off in that period. So this is lanthanum and actinium. And so that's why this bottom piece is just called the lanthanide series for the top row. And then the bottom row is actinide series. So that's it. That's your quick tour of the periodic table. There's certainly more information that the periodic table gives us that helps us not only in chemistry, but you'll see in a lot of other contexts going forward. So feel free to bookmark this video if you need a quick refresher of what the periodic table is and how it's laid out. Uh, it will help you immensely as the year gets going. Thank you.